can't get out of the house as often as we'd like, we paint inside, and there's nothing wrong with studio work. It helps you when you get back out there in plan air, and plan air helps you when you get back there in the studio. Especially if you shrink the painting down and you look at it when it's tiny, it really helps you focus in on which parts are dark and which parts are light. So we've sketched it out here in just a really quick version. And I've adjusted, I wanna bring this up a little higher here. I brought this down a little lower here. This is the main portion of all those tree leaves. And then here's the darker area here. Over here are palm trees and there's still some leaves here with some sky shining through. We have our focal point because whenever you have a road leading this way, you have a focal point at the end of the road. Even though there will be some light leaves over here, we'll still be looking this way. But what is so amazing in this painting, I hope, is the shadows. The shadows on the street, the shadows over here, and these two strips of beautiful radiant light coming through, especially here and here. That, I hope, will be what's standing out and helping to lead you down the road. So, this is acrylic oil paper. I like to use it when I'm working in the studio, just practicing. If I love the painting, I might do it on a bigger sheet of canvas or even a piece of canvas that's already been stretched on to its frame. We'll see. Anyway, I think we'll start this in acrylic, probably, and then maybe go over it with oil. I don't know. I never know till I'm actually doing it. We'll see. So today I'm using Golden acrylics, and this is not the open ones. I like the ones that dry quickly. And that's primary yellow, yellow ochre, pyro red, quinacridone, nickel, ozo gold, and anthraquinone, I don't think I'm saying that right, blue over here is dioxazine purple. So that's my lineup, of course, my titanium white. Not that many colors. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six colors and a white. And that should pretty much get me everything I need. Of course, I can make my greens out of my yellows mixed with my blue and make very pretty greens. And I'll just show you one, a little bit of the blue. Mixed with, let me clean this off, yikes, sorry. A little bit of the yellow, and you get a beautiful green. And then if I want to, I can take a little bit of that blue again, mix it with a little bit of my yellow ochre, and I've got a nice dark green. And if I want to, I can take a little bit of that blue, mix it with my yellow ochre, Add a tiny bit of my red, and I've got a little different color green. Okay, and you can keep on doing this. Add a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, and you get another color green, almost like a olive green. Okay, so look at all the different greens you have there. And anytime you want to change a little bit of the flavor, you can add a little bit of one of these colors and change any one of these, including, look, I haven't even added white to it yet. Let's just say I wanted to take my lightest green I have here and really lighten it up. To that, I can add more white or more yellow. And now I've got a beautiful lime green. Okay. So you don't need to have green on your palette to make green on your palette. Just setting my little iPad here so I can take a look at it. I even prefer to make the picture smaller whenever possible so that I'm not looking at any detail whatsoever. And just get in some very, very basic things with a very big brush. Okay. 
I want to start with just a medium blue, I mean a medium green, and go up in the corner here and begin to place some green wherever I think medium green goes. And I need to mix a little more of this up. But just to show you, then I'll go in places where I think I need a little of the lighter green and put that in wherever I think the light green goes. Okay, again, medium green. I need medium green down here. Medium green over here. Dark green, but which dark? I want a cool green right now. Why you say, oh my gosh, I don't even know what she's doing. This is just a block in, just a block in, just to give me an idea of approximately where the darks and the lights are. If you want to, you can do all the darks, then all the mediums, then all the lights. This is acrylic, so I can do anything I want with it. Pretend you are not painting anything except darks and lights. Where you see them, you place them. Maybe a little darker there. Squint your eyes. And go in and just hit some spots with sky. Yes, we'll go back and do sky holes better later. But for now, I just need to feel my sky is here. So here's where the sky is. It's all back in here. And I'll put those palm trees over this. And then depending on where, it's darker here. It gets a little lighter back here. More like the color that I just put in. I want to dull that just a little bit. So I'm going to put a little red in there. Dull it down a bit. And then just fill in these spots down here that are the big shadow spots. A little water on my brush. Again, we're just trying to block this in. I don't have to worry about final look right now. here and there. As you come to the edges, the colors change sometimes. It's not the same color throughout the entire shadow. And we can come in and lighten a little if we need to. I'm going to put in a little bit of that tree trunk there. Now I'm coming in with some more warmth in that tree trunk on the bottom side of it. And I'll lighten up just a tad bit as I get to this side where the sun is sort of hitting it goes through here, through here, up into here. And we'll work on all these limbs later, but just so we see where it's going. And this is complicated what you want to paint here. This is a fence. You have to decide. I'm not gonna do it all right now because I have to really decide how I'm gonna put the light and dark in on that fence area. There's some dark down in here. If you just follow light and dark, light and dark, you're usually in pretty good shape right now.
And this is why I wasn't sure about what I wanted to do there, because, yeah, I have to fill in stuff behind the fence as well. But there's that. Let's see if we can do it this way. I don't think so, but let's just add a little bit of that so we get the flavor of it. Okay. And you've got the majority of your block in here. There are palm trees back here. They go kind of hard to do while you're holding the dumb camera. There's another tree. It's a little darker though, and it's over here. like there. Now we will come in and lighten up some of this where the sun is hitting it. I got to fill in little buildings and things back here, which is kind of boring. You don't need to be bothered with that. But this is the light that's shining through there and works its way back there. And there's a lot of this back here. I will differentiate what's building and what isn't. Just so we have some stuff down. So there's your basic block in. I'm going to come in here, even though I'm going to mess up this fence, and darken this, because there's some dark areas there. And then there's some areas we don't really know for sure what they are. I'm just going to go over them and haze them up a bit. And then I'm going to come in here and hit this with a little bit of this green all through here and here. And we'll figure out what it all is later. Stand back, take a look at it, see what's working, what isn't. Do you have the general concept in? For instance, this fence looks like it's leaning over. I need this to be straighter. But generally speaking, is that what I'm looking for? I think so. Certainly have to get more green in here. But I've got the general idea. So I consider that a block in. Now you can do this with a little tiny brush if you want to, but there is no point. You have to go over it and do so much little tiny detailing and edging. You might as well go with the biggest brush so you here have. I'm continuing to develop the painting, bring the greens up into the tree, the darker greens. Making a little lighter sky on the horizon here. All of this has to be adjusted a little darker up above. I'll have to blend it here. Trying to straighten this fence out. I see it's still not perfectly straight, so that will have to be adjusted. Um, working with these shadows a little bit here and the lights, you just go back and forth. You know, if you give up on your painting at this point, it's just mediocre, but if you just keep plugging away, putting in little pieces of light, little pieces of dark, you eventually get it to look professional. There's a sidewalk over here. There's some buildings back there. I don't care how perfectly they're put in, just as long as you know you're on a street, you obviously know that's gotta be a structure. So I'll continue to plug away, take away that green right there and put in a little bit of this peach color there until I have this detail more defined but again not too much detail and then I'll put the little trees in here with some of the palm fronds and it'll be pretty much finished so I'll show you the next stage when we're pretty much done so at this point you have to decide what you want to focus on I have to make this pillar proper I did put a little bit of the sidewalk in there the fences over here I've got to work on this over here now 
Again, still blending the sky, but putting in a little bit of the palm tree. I'm not sure if I like the way the street is. I may smooth this a little bit. I haven't decided yet, but uh, I would say I'm about nine tenths of the way done. So you decide what is most important in your painting and what you would like to focus on. Since I like this light coming through here, leading us down the street, I wanna focus on that a bit, on the light that's reflecting off the top of this tree, on straightening this fence out, because it's still not quite right. I think it needs to come down more this way. And uh, then just going over the sky and everything, making sure everything is in place and we should be done. So here I'm just blending the sky a little bit from the lighter area into the darker area. Some smaller strokes into this palm tree top. If you want to, you can take a bigger brush and sort of smooth it out a little, but I really don't mind a lot of those little strokes. And I need to make it lighter down here because after all coming down the street is the focal point. That's too much. But we want you to look there. And that will help me to define these trees a little bit. Come back into some of the blue again so we can blend the darker with the lighter. Use my brush to blend it a little bit. Good. Maybe a little bit of that light in here. A little sky holes here and there. That makes all the difference. Can't go too light deep in the trees. Use my finger to blur it a little. Yeah, I like that sky better. I want to do the tiniest little bit more light right here. Not too much because it is the corner of the canvas. I'm sorry, I'm, it's hard to hold this camera. I think that's good. Maybe just, maybe, maybe, maybe just one more last little thing. That always overdoes it, you know? One last little thing. Uh-huh. That looks good. Now, another thing I wanna do is come in with some dark well, I don't know how dark, but I want some green here. Good, and then the dark color here, that's part of the tree. Give it a little character. I 
I don't really want this side too dark, but it needs just a tiniest little bit of dark shadowy color to show off the light side. And I really don't want this side quite as wide as it is. I want less of the light side. That's better. So as far as I can see, I'm going to have to make a correction here. I don't like the way that looks. Come in with the purple. That looks better. Mm -hmm. And maybe just a tiny little bit of light on that. Nothing has to be perfect. Just to show there's some light striking it. Just a little more brightness to a few of these leaves that I want shining through. So we really believe that there is some summer sunshine there. And a little white into that yellow to really bring this brighter here. helps us to continue looking down that road. That's pretty much done. Anything else I want to do to it, I'll probably do on my own. A little bit here, a little bit there, nothing much. Like adding just a few leaves very faintly in to the dark area so that is not quite so impenetrable. It has to, even though it's very dark in the photo, I know from looking at it with my own eyes that yes, you can see into that tree and see some of the leaves. I may lighten the sky at the end of the street just a little bit more and blend it into the trees down there so that they are almost all one beautiful horizon. Okay, I think she's done. Thanks for joining me, everyone. 
I hope you've enjoyed this, even with my shaking hand. I could have put it on a tripod and filmed it, but I always get in the way, just like I do when I'm doing it this way. It's frustrating trying to film without somebody helping you. But I think you got the gist of the painting. This is a pretty little tree-lined street in St. Augustine that I had the opportunity to walk down when I was taking a workshop there, an art workshop. So lucky me, it was a gift from my husband for my birthday and I really enjoyed the workshop and I've enjoyed sharing it with you all. Have a good day and see you on the next one.